Welcome artistic souls to Monet Cafe Studio. I've got some fun in store for you today as I feature Earthberry pastels to paint these adorable mice. Now this is a beginner friendly lesson. I'll even share with you my easy transfer technique. Anybody can do this. And I'll be sharing with you some of my reasoning for why I love marker sketching before beginning a painting. And that's not all, I'll share my favorite underpainting technique that really gives you that glow and luminosity to your artwork. And like I said, Earthberry pastels. This is the first time I use these gorgeous pastels that are actually from Russia. So let's paint these adorable little mice and I'm gonna give you the supply list right now. Thanks to those of you who mentioned in my last video that you really like to have a supply list before I start the video. So I do read your comments, thank you. So in this lesson, the basic supplies will be some pastel paper. I am using a water-friendly surface. And if you do the techniques I'm gonna be doing in this lesson, you will want a water-friendly surface. Also, I'm using a charcoal pencil for the sketch. I also will be using a waterproof marker and I'll be using a product to create a warm underpainting. I'll share all that in the video. You don't have to use the same product I do, but any warm color would work. And I'm going to be featuring the Earth Berry Pastels, and I'm so excited about that. But again, use what you have. We're wrapping up Furry Friends Month here in Monet Cafe Studio and on my Patreon page. This is an album that I curated from unsplash.com, a great site for copyright-free reference images. And I've included a lot of furry friends for my patrons to paint. And I was so in love with these little mouse photographs. And I thought, let me just do a series of paintings with these mice. And I really wanted to use the Earthberry pastels for these. And a big thank you and shout out to the photographer of these adorable mouse photos. I don't know how he got these. This was one of my favorites. So thank you, photographer Nick Feewings, and I am honored to paint from your lovely photographs. The surface that I'll be using is a professional sanded pastel paper. It's called Fisher 400. I love it. It's water friendly. It literally feels like sandpaper. And this is a 14 by 11 sheet that I have divided into four equal sections of six inches by five inches each. And I'm going to use each of these little rectangles to complete one of my mouse paintings. As I always say, use what products you have, but if you're gonna do some of the techniques I'm doing in this video, you wanna make sure you're using a water-friendly surface. All right, so what I've done is I've taken my little mouse photographs and I've cropped them in Photoshop so that they are all five inches by six inches. Some of them I have on portrait layout and some turned sideways as landscape layout. And I thought this little arrangement made a, a neat composition to maybe hang them all together. And by the way, if you are a patron of mine on my Patreon page, you will be receiving all of these images that I have cropped in Photoshop. They're all five inches by six inches, and you'll have the exact dimensions that I'm using for this tutorial. But if you're not a patron of mine, you can still click the link and see these images on unsplash.com. And how do you become a patron, you may ask? It's super easy and super affordable. It's only $5 a month, and you become part of my Patreon family. There are hundreds of lessons on my Patreon page, and I get to see your work as well. I love that part, so come on and join the family. And now I'll be sharing my easy transfer technique. This is great for beginner artists. I wanna prep all four of these at the same time to get them ready to paint. So I'm gonna be sketching each one of these images on the pastel surface and doing an underpainting technique. And I'm gonna show you a really easy beginner way to transfer a sketch. I don't recommend sketching like this because I always say it's better to learn how to freehand sketch, but I had actually been sick this past week and I kinda needed to get this done. So check out this technique, it's really easy. What you'll need is a charcoal pencil or a pastel pencil. I prefer a dark charcoal pencil. And I also recommend that you get it really sharp. Sometimes charcoal pencils are hard to sharpen. So I have a sharpener that I love. It's made in Germany. It's a brass pencil sharpener. You can find it on Amazon or dickblick.com. It's made by Mobius and Rupert. I will have a link to this in the description of this video. I do recommend also buying the replacement blades because because a nice sharp blade is really the trick to getting a sharp point. Let me now show you the super easy way to transfer an image 
to your painting surface. So I'm going to get this sketch onto my pastel paper by a simple technique. I'm basically just going to take the image and sketch on the back side of it. You may be saying, how are you gonna do that, Susan? Well, I'm just gonna put it up to a bright window and I just tape my little reference image flipped over like this to a bright window and then I can see the image very clearly to trace and all I want to do is get the basic elements just kind of the flower a little bit of the mouse it's just a real fast way to get your basic elements down on your surface all right let me do the tracing on the window you could also do this if you have a light table but most people don't have that all right i'm fast right <laughs> the magic of video editing and i have my little sketch ready to go and basically what's happened is we've made kind of a mirror image of it so when i flip it over and put it onto my surface i'm going to have the correct image transferred i do recommend taping it down that way it doesn't shift or wiggle and now to transfer the image I'm using a tool here. It looks a little weird, but it actually came with another product and it's all chewed up because my dog thought it was a toy, but all you need is a hard edge. A credit card would do. I'm just pressing down hard in multiple directions. Now let's lift this up and I'll show you the image. See, there you go. A little light kind of ghost image that is in place. All of the elements are correct where they're located. So it's a great and easy way to get started. Now I'm completing the rest of the sketches. Like I said before, I wanted to have all of these done and prepped. So when I got ready to paint, I could just grab my pastels and start painting all four of these. And with all of my sketches transferred, now it's time to go on to the next step, which is setting the sketch. And in this step, I'm going to be using a water-friendly marker to mark over the charcoal. This charcoal will just disappear if I add a, a product that is a liquid medium. So I'm using some water-friendly markers. Now, ones I've used in the past is Tombow markers. And I didn't use them this time because I felt, sorry, I love my fingernails, how dirty they are. Um, I thought the tip was a little bit too wide. I used a marker that I really love to use with watercolor painting. They're called Micron markers. They come in different sizes and you can get them really small. I think the one I used is a point or a 0.35. You see how small the tip is there? So it's really great for getting in this little sketch. All I'm doing is kind of outlining my charcoal drawing. And I wanna, while I'm sketching this, I wanna let you know, you don't even have to do this technique to follow along with this tutorial. You could um, not even use a wet medium and you could just start painting with pastel right on your little sketch. I always say, use what you have. You don't have to have all these products I'm using, uh, but I always have the descriptions in the video in case you wanna check them out. All right, so I got my little mouse sketch complete, and now I'm going to erase the charcoal lines. It probably wouldn't make that much of a difference if you left them, but I didn't want the charcoal uh, bleeding or blending when I go to add my uh, medium, my wet medium that I'm going to add in just a minute. So a kneaded eraser, spelled K-N-E-A-D-E-D, -E -E is great. It doesn't mess up your paper at all, and it really erases it well. And the next step is to create a warm underpainting. It produces such a beautiful glow beneath your paintings. I'm going to be using a product to tone this surface a beautiful warm color. It's one of my favorite ways to do an underpainting and it's called Golden Fluid Acrylics and the color is Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. That is a mouthful for a color, but you don't have to remember it because they don't make it anymore. But I'm gonna show you once I'm done with this application, uh, Golden, the company, has actually made a video on YouTube showing you how to use two colors to mix to get this exact color. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that. There are a few reasons why I love this color for an underpainting. For one, it's warm. It works really great for many landscapes. And also it's very, very translucent so you still get that glow of the paper showing through you are gonna need some water by the way and I'm gonna show you what I mean by it being really luminous um, on the little label of the bottle I showed before that little stripe of paint um, it shows how transparent their paints are some are very opaque and they just don't um, they cover up everything <laughs> you know they're not see-through at all so what I've done is I've got this brush that I'm using a large brush 
brush, use whatever you have. And I'm using a little bit of the quinacridone color in a separate dish to dilute it with water a little bit. If I apply this full strength, it's just gonna be too dark. And so I keep applying enough water to the second dish until I get the luminosity I want. Ah, there you go. Look at that. And my sketch is showing up just fine. Now you don't have to do this next phase that I'm about to do, but I like to use my underpainting uh, fluid acrylic uh, that I'm using here to create a value study of sorts. So I'm using a thicker application. Uh, if you notice from the reference image, the background is quite dark compared to the mice. So I'm just, you know, why not go ahead and get a value study in so that when I go to add pastel, there's just less that I have to do. And you have less pastel application and still more luminosity of that paper um, showing through. So again i'm just working loosely around the mice i'm not getting all crazy and getting out a teeny weeny brush i find that i can really accomplish a lot with a large brush and i did do one other thing which was an experiment i tried uh, a while ago when it worked so i remembered it i'm getting a brush just with some water on it now and what i'm doing my the handle fell off that brush and what i'm doing is just applying the water in some of the areas where i see the lightest values now you can see even that ink that i used the the good ink marker i used it did bleed a little bit in areas but it's not too bad and i'm not worried about it um, so now i've got a value study with a middle value a dark value and a light value and i just just blow it dry to get started. Real quickly, I just wanted to show you an image with the two colors that will equal the quinacridone color that I used. Um, it's the transparent red iron oxide with nickel azo yellow. And I'm gonna have a video link in the description of this video where the company Golden Fluid Acrylics shows you exactly how to mix these two colors. But if you wanna do a warm underpainting, you don't even have to use this product. You could use, if it's a water-friendly surface, you could use watercolor, you could use acrylic ink, you could even take a warm colored soft pastel, apply it, and then wet it with water. It, it turns into paint, so there's lots of options. Here are my four prepped sketches. Now, this is the first one I did, and I made the mistake of using the wrong marker. It bled, and I tried another technique that didn't work. I'm not even gonna tell you about that one. Trust me, I make mistakes, but fortunately, I can edit them out. These are ones where I used the correct marker, and it worked great. So, like I said, I wanted to get all four of these prepped and ready to go, so that when it was time to paint with pastels, I didn't have to go back and do this whole process again. All right, let's start painting. And now it's time for pastel application, and I am using these absolutely beautiful Earthberry Pastels. I want to first take you to their website, earthberrypastels.com. They are created in Russia, like I said, and what I love is that it's a family affair. Let me show you their about section. Actually, it's the mother, Galina. She is a scientific chemist biologist and she invented these pastels. Also, I know there's concern. Some people mention not buying from Russia, but I just wanna remind you that just like in the States, we may not agree with our political agendas and there are sometimes just some good hardworking families and I'll just leave it at that. So they are offering a 10% off coupon code. Also, if you use the code berry 10 you'll get 10% off your order. So here are a few of the sets. The set that I'll be using is the Wildflowers set. Now, I absolutely love their marketing as well, and I love the fact they provide all of these images for you to check it out. And even though they are in Russia, I have heard the shipping is pretty reasonable. Now, I got mine complimentary from the company. Thank you so much, Earthberry Pastels. But again, I love their marketing, and I will tell you ahead of time, I love these pastels. I love the shape of the pastels, the size. I love the color, the application, the softness. And for those of you concerned about toxicity, you don't need to worry about these pastels. They are all organic and non-toxic. And they sent me another little set. It's the one right here called Morning Fog. And I'm super excited about this set, not just because purple's my favorite color, but they have 
done something I've never seen before. It's a new invention. They call it the chameleon pastel. Can you see how each color swatch has two colors? Supposedly, these pastels can change their color. So I'm going to learn more about that, and you will definitely be getting a video of these chameleon pastels. And this is just me speeding up the unboxing of the sets I had. Again, this is the wildflower set. Don't you love their marketing? This is so cute. I love these little labels. And the pastels are just gorgeous. You're going to see them in action very very soon. And of course, like I said, I got the chameleon pastels, the morning fog set. You know I'm going to be sharing a video about this when I figure out how these chameleon pastels work. And yippee, it's time to paint. This lesson will feature this particular painting from the Mouse series, and the other three will be shared later as little speed video demonstrations. And this particular video on the Monet Cafe channel is sped up more than the version on my Patreon page. So if you want the, the slower content and more commentary, again, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page. This is the first Earthberry pastel I used from the Wildflower set. You can see it's a nice middle value taupe color. I thought it was a nice middle value to get started with these mice. I did use some other pastels from other sets. One is the Sennelier 40 half stick set. That's the set right there. It had some nice golden colors. And you can recognize the Sennelier pastels by the shape. See how they're kind of rounded? Um, and I love the fact that the Earthberry pastels, you can really recognize pretty quickly because they're not only rectangular, they're kind of flat and rectangular. So I used some of these darker browns and a little bit lighter value brown there just to get in some of the dark values that I could see in the mice, specifically underneath their bodies and where their feet were joining or attaching to that flower. And if you are very new to pastel painting, um, you might be thinking, wow, she's not filling in all that color. It's You're still seeing so much of that orange underneath. That's actually what you want. We don't want to press so hard. We want to keep a light touch and let these colors interact with each other. And eventually they do kind of start to blend themselves and fill in those spaces. But you want to reserve the tendency to um, to press so hard. Now that's a gorgeous earthberry pastel there. Look at that pretty mauve color. I love it. And I'm going to show you another set that I'm going to pull out right here. Um, oh, look at that green earthberry pastel. Such a pretty mossy green. Wow. All right. That little set that I'm showing there is called Shades of Nature. It's a set of Terry Ludwig pastels that has some of the most beautiful earthy uh, neutral tones. Now see, this is a Terry Ludwig pastel and you see it's rectangular just like earthberry, but they are thicker. And I gotta tell you, I really like that flat earthberry size. It's just really nice to work with, but I love Terry Ludwig pastels too. All right, so see, I've got these nice warm colors from that Shades of Nature set. And all I'm doing is layering my color and value kind of in the direction of how I see the fur growing. Now I will mention these mice are pretty small. It's only a five by six inch painting and these pastels are very chunky. So I actually think when you use a big old chunky pastel on a small painting, you kind of can't help but create a painting that uh, leans towards impressionism. You know, you can't get all those little fine details. And so it really is just some nice color and value in, uh, in a directional application that that's all you really need. You just need enough information to spell out what the uh, elements are that you're painting without all those details. And I'm using now a lighter Terry Ludwig pastel from the Shades of Nature set. Now, actually, I break those pastels. A lot of my pastels I break. Um, sometimes they're just kind of too large. And um, this one, I think it might have broken by itself accidentally. Oh, also, let me know if you're liking how I'm putting my color notes on the side here. That's a homemade board I made, by the way. I have a video on that technique, how I did that. And I love that I can, uh, it's, it's chalkboard. It's an application of um, adhesive chalkboard I put on a firmer board. And so I can mark on it and erase it. Um, I just use a wet paper towel. Now I'm adding some pretty blues. This is from that Sennelier 40 half stick set. Um, just because I didn't see it in the reference image, but I know that I can use cooler colors 
in the shadows, I know underneath the mice, there's going to be some cooler tones, or there could be. Again, even if you don't see it in the reference image, it's just gonna make your painting exciting. I have this expression I came up with where I say, you know, when we get in the shade or the shadows, we cool off, well, so do colors. So you can use that um, as your artistic license to exaggerate color sometimes. I love that pretty uh, pinkish red color I put down on the board there. I've just put a little bit of it in the nose and now I'm layering over with a little bit of this peach color and you still got a little influence of that reddish color underneath the nose area. And uh, there's that pretty red again. It's kind of like a, a cool red, a pinkish red. And so now the little feet, uh, the toes are very small. And I do the same philosophy with this that I do with like flowers. I typically put down the darker color first. I saw that little influence of pink. So I put down a darker pink and then I put down the little peach on top. So the colors just kind of um, interact together. Again, uh, I know this is a little bit of a speed version, uh, but I'm still trying to give you some good commentary. Uh, my full version, slower, and a lot more description is on my Patreon page. But I love bringing the free content here to the YouTube channel because I know there's a lot of people all over the world who they don't have any other way to learn how to paint. That's how I was. That's how this channel started. Um, I love this little burgundy color, uh, getting some warmth into the fur. That's again from the Sennelier set. And now you can see, oh, this is my, okay, let me, let me stop here. This is a Terry Ludwig eggplant color. It's a dark, dark, dark purple. And I used it to get the little blacks of the eyes in there. And you're later going to see me use some charcoal pencils to kind of fine tune that. They are so small. It was really hard to uh, work on those eyes with these large pastels. And at this point, you can see the um, underpainting underneath the mice. You're not seeing so much of that because I've just gradually layered colors on top of each other. And lo and behold, it starts to uh, really come together. And now I'm going to work on the background here. I noticed in the reference image that it was a dark background, definitely darker than the mice and these little seed pod flower head things. And I pulled out this pretty... Uh, kind of a teal turquoise darker value from the Sennelier 40 half stick set and you know this is a time where you can break out your artistic license and I thought this color would complement um, not only the painting in general but also that pretty warm background color now I'm adding a little bit of green I saw a little influence of green in the reference photo background and I'm not going to blend this background very much. Now, it's a little bit too textural right now, but you'll notice as I layer pastels for this background, they too will eventually start to blend themselves. And I'm going to tell you a little trick um, of how I do that, a couple of things I do to get it a little bit softer. Um, now, another pretty little green. And now can you see how that underpainting, that glow, really does have an influence under the painting? Um, here's one of my my little tricks. I'm using an earthberry pastel. It's a really pretty neutral, almost a purple gray. And I am blending it on top of these colors. And you can probably see the pastels kind of start to blend themselves. I didn't even need to break out some of my other blending tools um, because the pastels, after you add a few layers, they really will start to blend themselves. Um, so now I'm getting a few of the other little fine details in on the mice. And I'm gonna jump ahead and show you how I used a pastel pencil to get that little reflection in the eye. And trust me, it was not easy. Now I'm using a darker charcoal pencil to outline the eyes a little bit more and kind of uh, get the shape correct. And now I'm using a blue pastel pencil just to get a little bit more of a little reflection. I saw a little hint of blue in the eyes. And here you can see how I've worked on the flowers some with some of these gorgeous earthberry colors. Love the peachy tones there. And now I'll show you my other little technique for blending the background. I basically just got a stiff bristle brush and I just softened uh, the texture a little bit. I didn't over blend with it. Um, also be careful of pastel dust when you do this. I keep a HEPA fan by me when I work and it kind of pulls the dust away from me. So finishing marks here. And again, I wanted to share that I used quite a bit of the Earthberry pastels for this painting, but I also have one of the paintings where I only used Earthberry pastels. So here is the sweet little mice. Their nose is just barely touching. And I had so much fun creating all 
four of these mice. That's the one that I did only earthberry pastels on that one. This one was one of my favorites. And if you're a patron of mine, you will be getting the remaining tutorials with uh, slower speeds and more commentary. All right, everyone, please subscribe to this channel. Become a patron if you would like to support this channel and get the extra content. Check out more videos. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, God bless. I really mean that. And happy painting.